Hello, my Wilberforce family and friends. Welcome to Season 3, Episode 2 of Wilberforce Alums Podcast. Hi, I'm James B. Stafford III, the National President of Wilberforce University Alumni Association, and your host for Wilberforce Alums Podcast. We have designed these podcasts to, to profile graduates of Wilberforce University, those graduates who are doing exceptional things in their careers and in their communities. Before we get started, I want to remind you to make certain that you hit subscribe and give us a thumbs up so we can continue to do what we do relative to Wilberforce Alums podcast. It's important and it helps us a bunch for you to hit subscribe and to give us a thumbs up. And we really appreciate it. Now, before we get started with uh, this episode's interview with a really outstanding individual who is really well known in the inter international music business as a composer and writer. But before we introduce him, I want to remind you that this year we're having our first face-to-face -face annual national conference July 29 through the 31st on the campus of Wilberforce University. So you can register for it, make sure you do, and join us for the first face-to-face -face conference in two years. Be there on the campus of Wilberforce University. You can register by going to the Alumni Association website located at Wilberforce University Alumni.com. That's Wilberforce University Alumni.com and register for this year's 2022 annual conference to take place on the campus of the venerable Wilberforce University. Now, our guest today is one who's, he, who is in the music business, even though uh, he majored at Wilberforce University in math and business finance, but his career now is in the music business, writing scores for very uh, famous movies, which he will talk about and let you know uh, what movies he has done that for. Um, so we will introduce our, our guests right after this short break. Thanks and stay tuned. Welcome my Wilberforce family and friends. Welcome to another episode in season three of Wilberforce Alums podcast. Again, we're bringing to you another Wilberforce in who crossed through the doors at Wilberforce University and is doing wonderful, outstanding things in his community and, quite frankly, across the world. A renowned producer and composer uh, that you will hear from in just a few. Let me introduce to you another individual from the great motor city of Detroit, Michigan, Thomas S. Mills III. <laughs> is with us today, a 19, uh, a two, I'm sorry, 19, oh, whoa, going back whoa. to my days, oh, a 2002 <laughs> graduate of Wilberforce University. So at this time, I'm going to bring you Thomas S. Mills. I'm going to ask you, ask him to introduce himself, tell you a little bit about himself and uh, why he chose Wilberforce to matriculate so early in his educational academic career. At this time, Thomas S. Mills. You got the floor. Thanks a lot, man. I really appreciate you having me on the show. It's an honor to follow in your footsteps. It, it was an honor to attend and, and leave Wilberforce University with, with honors. You know what I mean? It's, it's just been a great experience. But uh, a little bit about myself. Um, again, left there in 2002, um, majored in mathematics. Um, minored in corporate finance and got my teaching certificate. Um, so <clears throat> when I left there, I was prepared for the world by being a high school math teacher. I felt like uh, teachers were needed, male teachers, excuse me, African American male teachers were more needed in the Detroit public schools than, any, in, than anywhere else. So I, I see, felt that yeah. I, could, I could really give, make my mark with it doing that. 
So um, let's begin with uh, my experience at Wilberforce. Um, it was amazing. It was amazing. It had its ups, it had its downs, but there were definitely more ups than downs at any point. Um, you know, one of the things that I did like about Wilberforce was not only was it the first HBCU, the staff was amazing, and I actually enjoyed being around the students. It was a small student to faculty ratio, so we were able to communicate with our professors on a regular basis. We were able to stay on top of uh, uh, our grades and how we were doing, and that was one of the things that always helped. I felt being able to discuss my grades and, and, and literally in some classes just discuss the things that were going on in the world and, and, and in the community, just being able to have those conversations with my professors meant a lot. Um, it gave me an opportunity to pick their brains and gave them an opportunity to talk to me one on one and know me. Um, and, and when I first got there, um, listen, it, it, it was a struggle. Um, didn't graduate with the highest honors in, in high school, but Wilberforce was able to take a shot with me. They looked at my ACT scores versus my grades in high school and said, okay, there was something amiss here. We're going to take a, a, a chance with this young man because clearly it, his ACT scores are far beyond what we were used to. So they, they gave me a shot. They, and and they, they, that shot is what propelled me to get my act together. Um, you know, I, I met plenty of people from across the nation, across the world, um, and was able to build friendships and relationships that have lasted a lifetime. So for, as far as I'm concerned, my lifetime since leaving there 20 years ago at this point. So the, the, even though it was a small campus, it felt big in my heart. It felt like it was one of those big universities, but I was able to communicate and have as much fun as I possibly could with the people that were there. Amen. Amen. So tell me this, though. Um, you, you write on about how uh, the university nurtured folk that, that came came through there. Uh, and, and the ability to be on a one on one basis with your teachers. I find that to be really beneficial yeah. in, in, in my uh, uh, in my area of study. Uh, but tell me this, though. Had, how did you hear about Wilberforce in the first place? Wow, that's an excellent question. Um, both of my parents attended HBCUs. My mom was at Tennessee State University. My dad was at Knoxville College. So it was just deep rooted in, 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 in my upbringing about HBCUs. Um, my parents knew that I was not prepared to be too far from home, but they also wanted to prepare me for life by following in their footsteps with an HBCU. And the very first school that we attended to take a shot with me, like I said, was Wilberforce University. Um, it was a private university. Um, tuition was just right for us. And, you know, the choice was kind of, when I did my tour of the campus and started meeting, meeting faculty and, and looking at how the, the, how I was being greeted by people and just looking at the campus and, 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 and all of that, I knew that was the place that I needed to be. So to answer your question, long story short, it was through my parents and that HBCU uh, legacy that I was trying to uphold. All right, all right. Well, it sounds like based on what you just said, you got some, may have some Tennessee roots there. You know, Tennessee State coming out of Nashville and Knoxville College, you said, right? Out of Knoxville, yes, Tennessee. You know, yeah. those are some two, uh, uh, major HBCUs in the state of Tennessee. Oh, actually, there's more than those two. There's yeah, others right, right here. Right. And I'm here in Memphis, and there's one here in Memphis, Tennessee. But it sounded like with that kind of connection, maybe you got some Tennessee roots. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Uh, uh, my dad was born and raised in, in, in Kentucky, and my mom was born and raised in uh, right there in Tennessee. So right. 
every all of that southern stuff was was it was in my roots all right all right, all right. i got you i got you so so you know you, you you started off by talking about now i know what you do now okay and and i know you're going to get into that but but you started out talking about being a math and uh and a business finance major okay yes but yes. you ended up in music basically <laughs> okay well you yes, taught sir. for a while too but you taught music you know based on what i read you know you taught music yes. in uh in high school there and and in uh professor at oakland university so yes sir. so 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 how talk talk about that progression from <laughs> math first of all not too many folk major in math these days you know right and even back in that day you know right and right. so uh so talk talk to us about that progression okay so again my roots. My mom was a high uh, was excuse me a middle school teacher and counselor. My dad, high school uh, teacher and counselor. So throughout my family, aunts and uncles, everyone was in the school system. So I kind I guess I kind of gravitated towards their living style and being able to have those weekends and those summers off. Oh, all yeah. Oh, yeah. Stuff. All right. <laughs> One of the benefits, was, right? <laughs> exactly. Those, those were always the benefits. Um, but I, I majored in math because uh, I found one teacher in high school that kind of made a mark. Well, I shouldn't even say high school. We'll go all the way back to elementary school that really just made a mark with math. He made it easy. He made it fun. And I remember that through coming up. And there was also a high school teacher that taught math that kind of left an impression on me as well. Math came fairly easy to me. Um, so I felt I could utilize and do the easiest thing that for myself in, in getting the Wilbur Force because I wasn't sure as a freshman what college was going to be like. Um, I said, well, I want to do something easy. Hey, I just major in math. Didn't know what it was going to be about until I actually encountered it and loved it. Um, but again, the school board was just in my roots. So became a teacher. I taught from 2002 till I stopped teaching in 2012. Um, I first began in high school, taught high school mathematics up until 2000 and 10. Um, and in 2010, I was approached by the principal of the school I was teaching at because he noticed that I had a background in music. And he said, hey, would you like to be a part of the music program that we're starting? Sure, why not? What do I need to do? He said, well, we're going to bring digital music into the high school. We're trying to expose these kids into something different beyond just football and basketball. So I, I jumped out and started teaching digital music at, at the high school that I was uh, teaching at. Um, I did half a day doing music and half a day doing math. And I enjoyed it. I just really enjoyed teaching. And from there, the school closed. So from there, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I started trying to build my company some more and seeing what, if, I, if I was going to be able to do this on my own without going back to teaching. Unfortunately, that didn't happen in 2010. And I applied because I have a master's degree. I applied at uh, Oakland University. They needed a music teacher. And they brought me on and I taught there for a year. And that's where I was exposed to Warner Brothers sound, and that's how I got into scoring music, which is what I do for a living now. That's a hey, that's, that's that's a wonderful wonderful story, you know. And 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 even music, as uh, quiet as it's kept, is not far from mathematics. Actually, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> you know, not, especially if you get into uh, uh, digital music, if you're talking about yep. in, in the realm of MIDI and all that sort of thing, exactly. that kind of le electronics. You know, you you really. That bat, that math background really helps you out along those lines. I would I would say so. And it but, but music exact anyway. You know, would would you know when you start talking about intervals and all that kind of thing, and you know, it's it it works. Yeah, it it, it comes time. together. Yeah, it comes together. So so now you know you you you've got your own uh, business going now, right? And and no yes. longer 
uh, uh, teaching, uh, uh, unless you got some uh, proteges coming along with you that you're helping out. But 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 let, let let's talk about you know some of the things you have done. You know, wow. in, in the business, because that's that's really key. I think people need to know, uh, you know, I know about some of the things because I I, uh, I I read them uh, uh, on, on some information. IMBD, I think is what it's called. IMDB Pro. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, like Batman and uh, Matrix. Uh, yeah. Resurrection. Come yeah. On, help, 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 help me out. Help me out with this. Okay. Tell, tell me how that fits into your 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 portfolio of things that you've done okay so like i said in 2012 i was approached by warner brothers sound they happened to be filming um batman versus superman here in detroit and they were looking for extras um i applied to you know i sent out a resume and all that stuff just trying to just be an extra they found out that i had a musical background and they invited me on to, to their set uh, where I was able to just be a part of the music trailer and in, in the music trailer and seeing how everything works out. Um, not necessarily being able to meet the actors because I was behind, I was behind stage. So I wasn't able to meet and greet the actors, even though I did see them from afar. I was more or less interested because of my musical background. I was more interested in just being a part of where I was, which was in the music trailer. Um, at that time, my boss was the only black guy in Warner Brothers Sound that did uh, composition. He and I kind of just had a meeting of the minds and, you know, just a, another black male. And he kind of took me under his wing and nurtured me and coached me into becoming what I am right now. Um, unfortunately, he passed a couple of years after working with me, but at that point, I was able to take over his job, and I feel like I'm trying to burn the candles to that guy. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, I'm all, I feel like I'm always chasing him, but in reality, I feel like I'm living up to what it is that he taught me. Um, right now I'm working on movie number 28 that I've been a part of, and it's been a blessing. It's been a blessing since 2012. We're literally going in 10 years now, and the days are long, the days are hard. As people say, the blood, sweat, and tears, the, 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 there are times in which I say, you know what, I just don't want to do this anymore. Uh, fortunately, I have a family around me that keeps me grounded and keeps me going. Um, I have uh, produced music for world-renowned artists, um, mostly overseas. Uh, the overseas sound is, they're trying to mimic us now. So everything in the UK, in China, in India, I'm, I'm spending most of my time trying to dig some roots there and, 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 and get that sound, get my sound into different areas. Um, so, so, so Tom, hold it right there. Cause I want you to yeah. talk about uh, uh, some of those movies that you've, uh, uh, you, you know, you, you, you participated in either score writing or whatever the case may be. And right. how, how does that work and all that? But right now, let me just take a break. And and uh, for a commercial a commercial break, <laughs> okay. <laughs> talk okay. about where, why why we're here today. Hey, yes, Wilbur Fortune's Fathers and Friends, we are here talking with Thomas S. Mills the Third, audio engineer and composer international. He he is a Wilbur Force grad from the from the year of two thousand and two, and and we're just celebrating his his success in in the area of music and, and composition, and and he's a internationally known composer. Now, before we get back to him, he's going to share with us some of the uh, things he participated in. I want you all to, to be mindful uh, to check the Wilberforce University website, the Wilberforce University Alumni Association website, because we are having our annual national conference July 29 through the 31st on campus of Wilberforce University. So you get all the information you need right there at the Wilberforce University alumni website where you can register and also book your hotel room, which will be located in the Beaver Creek Fairborn area. So it's the 
Wilberforce University Alumni Association Annual Conference, July 29 through the 31st. We look forward to seeing you all there, you know, with your green and gold on celebrating Wilberforce University. Now, getting back to Thomas S. Mills the third, talk to us about some of those uh, 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 movies and other things that you participated in and, and, and tell the folks just, just how that happens and how, how, how it works, that sort of thing. Okay, awesome. Okay, so what it is that I do, I am a part of a 33 member team throughout the United States. We work for the directors and for the lead composers of DCE from the DCEU universe, which is pretty much just DC comics that they're making movies out of. So what it is, is dealing with these composers, we are pretty much subcontracted to create the music that the composer puts into the movie. That's the shortest way to do it. Um, and I've been doing, like I said, I've been a part of this team for 10 years now. And a lot of the times the music that my team and I compose goes directly to these directors and they don't change a thing and they will literally drop it right into the movie and that's it. So when you do that, do you actually get a chance to see the video of the movie where you can make the sync, the music to actually the, the action yes. or how does that work? So what happens is, is they send us a scene um, whether it be three minutes or 30 seconds, they will send us a scene and it is my job to sit there, watch that scene and, and kind of decipher what that scene looks like and what that sounds like. Um, one of my monikers is, is that it's, it's what life sounds like. <laughs> so we watch that. I, I look, that, look at that and decide on what it sounds like in my head. And I do that for possibly 10 to 15 scenes in a movie and compose and arrange from what I see, send it in, and then that's it. I don't know what, how many scenes that I actually get in a movie until the movie comes out on release day. So when it comes out, are, are you happy with what they've used of yours? Do they, they, don't, they don't normally uh, modify it or edit it to any degree, I guess. I don't know, they may tell you if they do, but mm -hmm. how does that work? Do you, do you feel pretty good about it? And, and I guess your name appears in the credits somewhere, and or, or well, does it? it does not. And it's the reason it does not is because I'm working for Warner Brothers Sound, not for the actual movie itself. I got you. Okay. Warner Great. Brothers Sound, we literally work for everybody. Okay. Anybody can hire us. So because we have that WB uh, umbrella, we do everything for Warner Brothers, whether it's working with Superman or the Flash on the CW network or the Flash movie or something like that we work for everybody so I'm, I'm still hoping to get that one time that i can go to the movies and see my name on screen i'm still waiting but i feel like i'm gonna get there one day um but to give you an idea like i said that one scene will get will i don't know until that movie comes out. And every time it's, it's, it's amazing. And, and my family has grown to know what scenes that I do. 95% of the scenes that I'm involved in are action scenes. So if it's a fight scene in Wonder Woman or in the Batman or something of that sort, that's probably me. It's, 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 it's an amazing thing. Don't get me wrong, but, um, yeah, that, that's it. No, 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 <laughs> that, that's, no. It, that's it, it, it sounds like it's uh, it's absolutely amazing as to how you actually can sync that music score to a scene. You right. know, I've I've seen that uh, on uh, on uh, on and as a video. Right. Uh, but but actually being sitting there, we I, I you know I know a little bit about music. <laughs> I play a little bit, but uh, but sitting there and trying to write a score to to sync to action. Right. Uh, to me, is, is it's, it's, you know, that takes, that's an art to do that, I think. You know, a real, real art to do that because well, thank you, you got to be you. hearing, you got to be hearing all this stuff. You got to know the music and, and really, you got to be really hearing yes, what sir. You're going along with that. And that's, uh, that's, that's an art. So, and no two scores can sound alike. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, so what are some of the, the, the uh, movies that you've actually worked on? You know, are you able to, to, to wow. articulate what they are, or, you know? Yeah, of course. Um, right. The very first thing that I did that I was a part of was uh, in 2014, which was nonstop. 
with Liam Neeson. Um, that was actually a independent film from the very beginning that won many awards that was picked up by Lionsgate, I think it was, that actually made it to the big screen. That was the first time that I was actually involved in anything. And um, after that, I think it went to Transformers 4, which was filmed here in Detroit. Um, I got a shot off of that one. Then that moved into Batman versus Superman that came out in 2016, but it was filmed here in 2014. Um, done Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, wow, Wonder Woman, uh, more Transformers. I was a part of Justice League, uh, Tomb Raider, Rampage. Um, I did a couple of the Avengers films. Um, I did some music in Ocean's 8, uh, Aquaman, Shazam, Godzilla. Mm. <laughs> Just it, listen. The list goes on and on, right? It, yeah. Like I said, I'm working on number 28 now. Um, and the thing is, is that we're always ahead. So I can't disclose what it is that we're working on I now, but yeah. we're filming. What we're working on right now will probably release end of 2023, maybe 2024. Gotcha. So I see behind you there, too, looks like platinum records. What does that represent up there? Those platinum records are from uh, an artist of mine that I was working with whose album came out in 2015. Um, her name is Shy Rain, and her album came out in uh, the UK. Um, she was able to solidify 750,000 records sold in the UK at the time, which qualifies for double platinum status there. Mm. Um, and she has toured. She has. She's really doing her thing. She's working on a second project now that I'm able to produce for her. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's it's that's how that's that's part of that whole worldwide thing going on for me. All right. Well, that's great, man. And so you're the guy to, that these these artists need to know. I mean, if they're trying to get get some recognition out there in and among the the world, huh? You're the guy. Yes, sir. I feel like I'm that guy. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> nothing wrong with that at all. Yeah, nothing wrong with that at all. Man, man, that's that's outstanding. That's outstanding. Well, Thomas, you know, is, is there anything that uh, uh, we've run about close to 30 minutes now? I didn't think wow. it seemed like it, it's gone that fast. But, you know, in, 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 in talking with you and listening to you talk about the things that you've done. I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's, and that's why we're doing these podcasts so that people yeah. will see what, 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 what Wilberforce university turns out and, right. and how you can become, you know, successful uh, at whatever you want to do by attending an HBCU and more yeah. specifically Wilberforce university. And that's what, that's the message that I want to send out to, to everybody that views uh, this podcast. So in, 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 as, we, as we wind down, um, what would you like to leave those people or those individuals or maybe even potential students who may consider Wilberforce? What kind of, what, what would you like to, 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 to leave with them? Wilberforce is a family. Um, small school, um, student to teacher ratio is, is, is amazing. I think when I was there, it was maybe 10, maybe 15 to one. I don't remember off the top of my head, but I know my classes weren't that big at all. Um, but it's a family. And just having the opportunity to leave one family and go into a bigger family is, should be something we all look forward to. Um, having the opportunity to meet people from across the globe in your dorm and, and just commune with these people, eat with these people, have fun, play and all of that with people that are your family that you may have an argument, you may even have a fight or two, but by the end of the night, you're hugging it out and you're watching the game. Um, truly a family. Um, and just don't count yourself out. They took it, Wilberforce took a shot on me from the very beginning, and that shot panned out for me, and I'm sure it can pan out for the next person. Um, 
that's that's the main thing. Like I said, because of the small university, that that whole family oriented education really helped me out. Well, those are right on uh, right on words, uh, Thomas, that you just uh, mentioned and you conveyed to everyone. And it's it, it's things that we really need to listen to and take to heart because Wilberforce can actually do it for you. You just have to and and just have to apply yourself while you're there. And, yes, sir. and you, you know, you, you can do and become whatever you want to be, you know, as a result of it. So uh, I know that's, it turned my life around and, uh, and, well, I'm, still, around, around <laughs> and, I, and I'm still, uh, I, I'm saying I'm still working for Wolf. I'm not working. I'm a volunteer, but if, yeah. it feels yeah. like work though, but I, I love it. I enjoy it. And, you know, I wouldn't uh, want to do anything other than help Wilberforce grow and to, to, to be an impact on so many other uh, individuals' lives as it was on mine and, and listen to you on yours as well. So yes, sir. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Now what we need to do is get you to come back to the, to the conference and, 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 you know, and you know, uh, Donna Jones up there in, in, in uh, Detroit, yes. uh, you, you know, you need to come on and join that, that chapter if you're not already a member and then, you know, join the National Alumni Association and, 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 and do your thing w with us on a national basis. Tell me this though, do you play yeah. anywhere now? Or are you playing individually like in church or anywhere or, or with a group well, or anything? <laughs> Funny thing is, is I met Donna because she goes to my church. Okay. And I'm actually the audio, one of the audio engineers at my church. I right. control the sound that goes on. So nothing happens without me. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Well, I was, I, I saw those, guitars and stuff behind you and, and, and on some of the stuff you sent me. I just wonder if you still playing somewhere for someone or, or something. Well, that the, I play just about every instrument. Um, not a jazz musician, but I can play. Okay. I play them enough to get done what I need to get you done. Need to do, yeah, I hear yeah, you. Exactly. Okay. Um, yes, I am still playing. And, and again, everything that you're hearing from me is on the big screen. Um, I'm not playing anywhere live. Like I said, I'm not a jazz musician, but I am able to pick up an instrument and, and get done what I need to get done. So one last thing, when you are doing syncing that score, are you doing it on, on a, a computer as well as on a uh, uh, on a musical devices or just how does that work? OK, that's an excellent question. So what happens is, for instance, uh, I can give you uh, Wonder Woman. Um, Wonder Woman was composed in a studio like mine. Um, now what happens is, is the music is done on computers with software um, and software and live instruments, you know, whatever it is that we want to pick up. In the event, one of the songs is picked up for, say, like Wonder Woman's theme song. We then have the opportunity to compose that score and fly out to either the New York or the Burbank um, studio. And we're able to sit with the lead composer and actually get our song played by national world renowned, I shouldn't say national, I'm sorry, by world renowned musicians. These guys work on the score. These guys play these violins and timpanis. We get a chance to pretty much be the maestro and conduct that orchestra that's playing our music live. So, so are you doing the notation then on the sheet music yes. or you're doing the yeah. notation? Is that done yeah. through the computer then? Yes. Or, or, or by program. Hand? Listen, everything is software based. Now. <laughs> it has taken out the, the theory is still there, but it is not as hard as it used to be. Yeah, man. See, that's, that's that interesting stuff. That's that math. That that's that math background that helps with that too. You know. Oh, of so, course it is. You know yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, man. Hey, it's been great, man. It's been great talking to you. I learned a lot. As you can tell, I'm probably you know I'm I'm interested in music too. So you know I do a little yes, bit sir. messing around here and there. But it's been been fantastic talking to you and meeting you. You know this, Thank that's you. been Thank great. And so it was an uh, honor to even give these these few moments to anybody that's listening and anybody that wants to be a part of Wilberforce, whether it's an alum that needs to, to come back and help give to Wilberforce, or if it's for someone that just needs to send a student to Wilberforce, anything that I can do to help, believe me, I'm there. 
I'm 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 that guy. I got your contact <laughs> information, so you believe me. I'm gonna use please, it. <laughs> please reach out. Please yeah. Reach so out. hey, everybody, every, all my Wilberforce and friends and and family members and those who are just looking on, make sure you click subscribe and give us a thumbs up so we can continue to do what we're doing relative to making Wilberforce alums known across the country. Remember, subscribe and give us a thumbs up. That's what makes us do what we do. All right, folks, until the next episode and, se and uh, uh, season three, we'll be back with you. Good day.